uh, Scott Oak, otherwise known as Darcy Oak's father, <laughs> joins us on Primetime Sports. How are you doing, Scott? Is he still in the basement? <laughs> That's the big joke around here, and he'll be mortified if he uh, was to know that I I said this, but you know, world-class illusionist signs with big-time agency and CAA. It's the most powerful agency in the world and comes home to his parents' basement. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Oak, uh, we are pleased to announce, will uh, continue to appear on Hockey Night in Canada every Saturday as well as across the national broadcast on Rogers as a reporter starting this fall. And uh, Scott, as I said to Elliot, welcome welcome aboard. Well, I'm thrilled just to still be working. Um, I've always been worried that at some point in my career somebody was going to figure it out that I was no good, and Rogers clearly hasn't just yet. So... I'm uh, thrilled and uh, delighted that they've asked me to be part of uh, of the hockey crew, and it's not just Hockey Night in Canada anymore. It's uh, it's all of Rogers Hockey. Uh, whatever they ask me to do, clearly, uh, you know, I'll do. And uh, looking forward to working on Saturday nights and whatever else they they need me to do. One of the big questions, Scott, we have we all have about uh, the summer. now. Wait now, Elliot. Yes. Are you interviewing me now? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, I'm interviewing cool. you now too. I have lots of questions I want to ask you, so get comfortable. Yeah. I gets hired, and you can tell how eager he is. He wants to do interviews. That's already. right. I'm ready to go right now. <laughs> uh, one one of the some of the best work you do is after hours. Have you talked Whoa. about what the what the future of after hours is? Uh, I think uh, all of the the programming, uh, pre, post game, etc., is under discussion right now. And uh, uh, we, we've had some preliminary discussions about, uh, you know, what might happen at the end of the night. I'm uh, hopeful that it carries on, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. It's, uh, it's not uh, a decision that will uh, um, you know, be made lightly. Uh, we, we all know that the Hockey Night in Canada tradition is, you know, it's a lifetime tradition. The program has been around for 60 years, but mm-hmm. I do know that Rogers will, well, 61 actually, uh, will will treat that tradition with respect. Mm-hmm. But uh, at the same time, it's a new era and things change. Uh, but that said, um, we'll we'll see what happens at the end of the night. I hope there's something resembling after hours. It's Elliot Friedman and Scott Oak uh, joining Jeff Blair in Primetime Sports. Uh, Elliot and Scott both today, it was announced, uh, joining Rogers. Uh, hockey coverage this year. I'm going to ask both. Yeah. I'm going to ask. Elliot, did you feel just before we're going yep. further, Jeff? Did you feel the announcement? Was you guys can interview each other now, or what? <laughs> well, I just want to know if, if Elliot thought the announcement was was watered down because you had to share the spotlight with me. I think it's kind of the other way around. <laughs> hey, I'm going to ask both you guys this question. I'm going to ask both you guys this question. Look, because like everybody else around here, I mean, I grew up watching Hockey Night in Canada. I mean, I grew up in a small town in Manitoba. When we started out, we're, we're, I, mean, I can remember getting color television for the first time. We had like three channels. Mm-hmm. Um, Hockey Night in Canada is, uh, a, you know, to me, it's an it's an endearing brand. I'm going to ask you guys just one word to describe your time uh, at Hockey Night in wow. Canada. And I'll start with Elliot because he's handy. And Scott, congratulations. You get an extra three minutes to think about this. <laughs> with one word, it better not take me three minutes to come up with it. Um, I would say lucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be my word. Like I, I never, uh, I think when you're young and you're such a lousy hockey player that you realize that you're not going to make the NHL yourself. Um, you watch hockey night in Canada. You hope as a, as a reporter or broadcaster, or whatever you want to be, you, you end up there. Um, I, I can still remember the very moment when I got the phone call that I was going to be hired and I was passenger in another car, and I and passenger in a car, and I was so excited, I almost caused the driver to go off the road. Um, I I feel that I've been very lucky to be at Hockey Night in Canada for ten years. That's the way I would answer it. Oki, my uh, one word would be a play on that. Um, not quite a synonym, but uh, privileged, uh, because I don't think that. It's the right of anyone to work on a show as wonderful and as traditional as Hockey Night in Canada. It's a privilege, and uh, I, when I got the opportunity to do it, I, I thought, well, you know, I, I've kind of made it in this business. And I think it's, uh, it's the goal of a lot of uh, young sports broadcasters, young and old, uh, in this country to work on the longest-running sports property in all the land, which is what Hockey Night in Canada is. It's the standard by which other shows have uh, long been measured, and uh, you know we're the show of record on Saturday nights, and we'll continue to be that. Um, so I've just basically felt felt privileged to never take anything for granted, and uh, fortunate to be there, and uh, I never lose sight of that. 
I want to ask both you guys this question as well. Now, uh, Scott, you have been uh, with Hockey Night in Canada, gosh, what, 20, more than 20, 20 years, 25 years? Well, I guess I started contributing to the program when the Jets got into the NHL in right. 1979. And then I joined the program full-time, uh, hosted the CFL on CBC for about uh, eight, nine, ten years. Right. And when that was done around 96 or 97, I moved full-time into uh, Hockey Night in Canada. And, uh, and the show's never been the same ever since. Exactly. And, <laughs> and, you know, the other thing, Elliot, is that you just mentioned how lucky you were to work on the show. And, you know, you've said quietly to people in the past that I'm the person that got you hired. So I want to give you the opportunity now <laughs> <laughs> with hundreds of people listening on the fan. <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> well, I, whatever. <laughs> to to give me credit for that. I okay. always assume, Scott, that you got me hired here, too. So I guess I owe you double now. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to say, Elliot, you've been you've been there for 11 years as well. How is yeah. how is hockey? How has hockey coverage changed or oh, Twitter Twitter over, over the year? I'll start Elliot because you are a Twitter beast too. Yeah. I, I wish I was on it less than I am now. I mean, it, it can be fun. It can be the biggest aggravation slash nightmare of your mortal existence, but it can also be really fun. And Twitter has totally changed everything. I, you know, Jeff, I come from an era like you and a lot of other reporters out there you know, you get the information, you like to check it, you like to warn people, this is what I'm hearing. And, and it used to be, you know, you could wait until next day's paper or that night before to say, okay, if you're not going to get back to me, it's going to print tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now that's that's over. And um, now when I get in touch with someone, I know, I'm i worried that someone else is going to beat me to it. Someone's going to break the news before I do. Um, how long can I give this person a chance to respond before I absolutely have to get this out on Twitter? It is amazing how much it's changed everything, both for the better and the worse. And uh, I think that I think Twitter is the single biggest thing that has changed coverage of hockey and everything else more than I would argue anything else in the last twenty years. Yeah, Scott? social media definitely uh, has changed uh, the way we approach everything in the game. Uh, but you know, Twitter is can be a good source of information if the sources are credible, like, uh, like Elliot, you know, is good at getting news out there as it breaks and sometimes breaks it himself. Uh, but sometimes Twitter can be a black hole of hate with, uh, no heart, no conscience. And worst of all, no breathalyzer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what Healy says. Twitter should come with a breathalyzer. Yeah. Listen, drunk, drunk tweeting. We've all been there. Uh, yes, yeah, don't uh, don't never drink and tweet. Uh, no. Otherwise, you'll have to claim your account was hacked. No, <laughs> the most common excuse. But social media is part of it. The other uh, aspect of it is how the game is covered. I mean, speed and skill reign in hockey now, and the game is a lot faster than it was. And um, the, the the technology has, of course, never been better. It changes by the year, if not by the month, and uh, the game is presented in spectacular fashion now. And, uh, that's what we've had going for us at Hockey Night in Canada, and Rogers, I'm sure, will continue that tradition. Scott, how have the players changed to deal with? H have they changed? You know, I always say of hockey players that they're good kids from basically from solid middle-class homes with solid middle-class values. And I find hockey players, and Elliot can speak to this more than me because he's been more involved in basketball and hockey, or basketball and baseball, the other two sports in Toronto than I have. Um, but Hockey players are just, for the most part, good kids who don't lose sight of where they've come from. Very approachable. We do those walk-off interviews that you know sometimes can be good. Sometimes they're not much more than you know one long-running cliche. But players, for the most part, covet the opportunity to do them. Uh, they covet the opportunity to appear on our post-game show after hours and tell their stories. And I don't think you find that in sports. I always remember Zach Hill who is now the PR director for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. Yep. He started out working for the uh, 76ers in the NBA, and he said he used to get 10 requests a day in the NBA, and he was lucky if he got one answer, and they <laughs> were all no. Mm -hmm. He says if he got, he, he went on to say if he got 10 requests in the NHL, he would get nine yeses, and one guy would say he was sorry he couldn't do it because he had something else going on. So there's a significant difference in, uh, you know, in the, the way hockey players, um, you know, are, uh, express their, their gratitude for being in the sport. You know, you know, I think what happens too is that Hockey Night in Canada has power, the name. Um, all the kids, even whether you play hockey or you don't, like, they, they grew up watching it. They mm -hmm. know what it is. And we've always, you know, the, when I came from, you know, I started here at the Fan in 1994, 
I went to uh, the score in 1997. I moved to Hockey Night in 2003. And, and the one thing that became clear, and Scott would have already known this, is that when, when Hockey Night needed something, the answer wasn't an automatic yes, but there was a better chance that people were going to say yes than anything else. And I think the other thing that happens, and Oki knows this too, and you do too from your years covering baseball, is the more you're around and the more they know your face, yeah. the more chances you get for people saying yes. Mm -hmm. So I think between Scott in particular, because I don't go on the road as much anymore, being constantly around those players and the hockey night name, you know, you have a better chance of, of, of getting things done. And the towel, and a, if yeah. there's one thing I would recommend for Sportsnet, it's keep the towel. Oh, the towel. The towel <laughs> is big. And you'd the be towel surprised. Has players, I've had players ask me before the game if they could be the intermission interview because their father wanted the towel. I was going to say, <laughs> you, you know what? They're like the Tonight Show mugs, right? You'd be yeah. surprised where they resurface. Listen, uh, Scott, it was great. Before you, did... you go, Jeff, yes. I want to point out, yes. raised an interesting point. He said uh, that you have a better chance during Hockey Night in Canada of getting people to, to agree to do things because they've seen you. For a while, I, I thought it was pretty funny because Elliot knows what a smart Elliot I can be. I introduced myself to players. I, I started this last year just for a joke, saying to them, younger players, well, of course, you grew up watching me on TV. And I was expecting to get a blank look on their faces. And when about nine of them said, yeah, of course I did, I stopped <laughs> doing it. It made me... <laughs> <laughs> made me feel like, wow, I got to cut that out. Uh, <laughs> listen, want to retire me, <laughs> Scott. Scott, it was great of you to do this today. Thanks so much. Welcome aboard. We'll look forward to talking to you uh, it's a again. And an honor to continue to work on Hockey Night in Canada and on all the Rogers broadcasts. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, as I said, uh, I'll conclude the way I started by saying I'm just thankful to be working and that they value uh, what I might be able to bring to the program. Take care, Scott. Take care, Scotty. Congratulations.